You know what? Just don't be offended. Just know that the Lord loves you and know that your pastor loves you. Yes. All right. I want to turn your attention to Psalm 91. Psalm, the book of Psalms, chapter number 91. Praise God. Hey, the, the, the super inscription or the heading over this chapter, it says, Happy State of the Godly. I hope that's a good indication of what this service is going to be like. Amen. Hallelujah. Psalm chapter 91. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and start reading in verse number one. Um, but well, I'll just start reading in verse one. If you haven't, say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee. I don't know about you, but that's enough to shout about right there. Amen. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fire. Yeah. Yeah. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler. And the text goes on, but we're going to stop right there. And I want to talk to you for a little while today on that subject, the snare of of the fowler. If God will help me, um, we're going to do that. We're going to talk about the snare. We're going to talk about the fowler. And we're going to talk about the heat, hopefully, the heat that shall deliver thee, that surely he shall deliver thee. Amen. One more time, if you would, put your Bibles down. Now lift your hands. And now let's lift our voices together and let's ask the Lord to help us. Jesus, we love and appreciate you. We thank you so much. We've got several that are out today, God, but we've got uh, a good group of people here today, Lord, that are excited about the word of God. They're excited about being challenged and, and being convicted by the word because everybody here today, I believe, is interested in making heaven their eternal home. I'm asking you, God, to help me to do a good job. Uh, they're not interested in hearing what doth say of flesh, but these good people are interested in what the Spirit has to say today. And so, God, I pray that you would allow me to be your oracle, allow me to speak a prophetic word. I pray, God, that you would use me to minister and edify this good body today and let everybody say in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, look up here and smile. Show me your teeth. <laughs> Praise God. Leave them in your mouth. <laughs> or your tooth. Whatever you got. Okay, it doesn't, that don't bother me. Praise God. Amen. You look pretty when you smile. Amen. I want you to get out of your seat. Go shake three or four people by the hand. Look them in the eye and tell them don't fall into the trap. Don't fall into the trap. Don't fall in 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 the
want to talk to you today about the snare of the fowler. Amen. Randall come up here told me, he said, don't you be talking about my old hood. They used to call it the trap. Essentially what he's saying is, is once you get in, it's hard to get out. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Ooh, I can stay right there for a little while. You know what? I might, I might gin sake on you and circle back and hit that again. I know you Man, I like, you know what? I, yeah, yeah, I do kind of feel a little something over in this area back, back in the back. Amen. Everybody say the snare of the fowler. I'm going to talk about that for a few minutes today. And I pray that you're not in a hurry because... I think I've just about determined within myself, I'm not going to tell you any more that I'm going to be quick. Maybe if I, maybe I'll trick my brain if I tell you that I'm going to take my time today and uh, I'm going to be long-winded anyhow. So, uh, you know how things go. Maybe I'll just, uh, you know, manipulate myself. But I want to talk to you about this, this topic today. I, I read the other day one writer was saying how uh, the devil of old is dead. We've got a new devil today. And this devil today, uh, he differs from that deceiver of old. And he was writing and he said, Brother David, he said, it's the same evil spirit, but his modes of attack have changed just a little bit. And he was writing about how the devil of your grandparents day was this gnarly looking beast you know the the horns and the pitchfork carrying kind of devil uh, uh, this grimy looking ugly thing uh, that persecuted the church by casting people into prison and casting Christians in to the furnace of fire and, and killing them for the name of Jesus' sake. But but he said that the devil today, not quite like that very much at all, but, but the enemy of today is actually a well-spoken gentleman with a big old smile on his face and perhaps even a, a suit and tie on and he's real charismatic like if you know what I'm talking about and instead of persecuting the church uh, the devil today he persuades yeah, that's right. he charms people yeah. he's real attractive and he's He's real good at getting your attention and, and luring you into his trap. Oh, yeah, Hallelujah. Yeah, he has a way of wooing people uh -huh. yeah. and getting people's attention. Yeah. Yeah. You see, back in the old days, the devil wanted to try to destroy the church from without. But this new devil, he's going to get on the inside of the church. And instead of persecution, instead of destruction, he's going to dismember the church from within with disunity. Sowing a little bit of discord on this side of the church. And putting a little bit of gossip on this side of the church. And he doesn't have to persecute you and threaten you with death. If he can get on the inside and cause a little bit of discord. The one on this side of the church doesn't like the one on this side of the church. And uh, you know, well, praise the Lord, somebody... He doesn't have to throw us in the furnace or crucify us like he did that first century church uh, if he can just introduce a little bit of false doctrine. Some new revelation. If he can get us to if he can get us to grab a hold of some new doctrine that they, well somebody ought to say praise the Lord to that. If he can get a little bit of worldliness in the church. Everybody's not going to fall for it. But he might get a few to stumble. 
He might cause just some to get off track just a little bit. Hallelujah. I've come to warn somebody today. You better beware of the fowler, my friend. While his methods may differ from old, his objective is the same. He wants to get you caught up in the snare. If he can get you in the trap, my friend, it's going to be hard for you to break loose. We're introduced to the fowler in the opening verses of our Bible. You look at Genesis chapter number 3 and the Bible says that the serpent, or if I may, the fowler, was more subtle than any beast of the field. That just simply means he was tricky. He was cunning. He had some devious devices that he was fixing to play on humanity. Hallelujah. Can I tell somebody today, you better never underestimate the fowler. Hallelujah. The Bible says if any man thinks that he stand, you better take heed, my friend, lest you stumble and fall, lest you find your foot in the trap of the fowler. Hallelujah, somebody. Because the fowler that I'm talking to you about today, hallelujah, he's sneaky. He's deceptive. He's more subtle than any beast of the field. And I'll tell you this, he knows how to paint a real pretty picture. He doesn't just throw his trap out there for everybody to see. With a big old bold sign lit up that says trap, uh -huh. snare. No, that's not how he does it. Hallelujah. He disguises his trap. He'll dress it up with something desirable. He'll dangle something out there in front of you that's got you reaching and clawing and jumping, trying to get it. He'll put something out there that doesn't look harmless. It doesn't look bad. It may not even be sin, but if he can get you to reach after whatever he's got dangling out there, and he knows he can get you closer. If he can get you in his trap, He'll throw some bait out there. And little do you know, my friend, that that bait is luring you to your own destruction. Hallelujah. I was thinking about the, the carnival barker. Anybody know what I'm talking about? The carnival barker. There you go. Step right up, my friend. Look at everything I've got to offer you. You can win this for the low, low price of a dollar. You can have this if you're just willing to uh, take a little gamble. If you're willing to put it all out there. If you're willing to put it all on the line. It's real easy, friend. Just give it a shot. Hey, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll give you a free chance. I'll give you another chance. And you just pay a real cheap price. Let me tell you what the devil will offer you. He'll offer you something cheap. But you'll never. You don't have He'll offer you something real cheap, but in return, he wants your soul. He wants you for eternity. I read Cleopatra. She was a, a pharaoh, a female pharaoh. She was the queen of Egypt. You know how she died? It said that she died because somebody brought her a basket of flowers. And she had no idea that in that basket of flowers was a poisonous snake. Somebody poisoned her by offering her a little bouquet of roses. It came disguised. Her death came disguised as something pleasurable. That's how the devil works. The devil wants to get you in his snare. He wants to get you in his trap. He's sneaky. He's subtle. He's not just going to put it out there. Yeah, yeah. Let you know it's a bear trap. Let you know it's for your destruction. It's coming in the form of something. Anybody ever heard of the Trojan War? Yeah. It's a war between Troy and Greece. It had been a decade long. They were battling it out. 
But Greece finally threw up the white flag and they surrendered and they got in their ships and they started sailing away. But as they sailed away, they didn't fail to leave a little a little gift for Troy at the banks of, of the of the of the sea there at, at the head of their gates, right outside of Troy's gates. They had left them a little victory prize. We give up. Uh, we, we surrender. You're the victor. And, and in honor of your victory, we're going to leave you this, this wooden horse. You know what I'm talking about? And they left the wooden horse right outside those gates. And as Troy went outside the gates and they began to drag that big old monstrous horse inside the gates. And they were waving the enemy goodbye. Salute them. We beat you. We destroyed you. Hallelujah. Under cover of night. There were, there were special forces. Greece's special forces military started climbing out of that hollow wooden horse and, and they didn't realize that, that just as soon as the sun went down, guess what? Greece turned around under cover of night and they got beat because they received something that was really a trap in disguise. Hey, can I tell you that Trojan horse has went on to metaphorically mean something to us today. We, we say Trojan horse and it's really a strategy. It's a trick whereby we open our doors and we just let the enemy come right in. Hallelujah. I said we open the doors and we just give the enemy full access to us. Mm. Hallelujah. I tell you what, today somebody's going to get the victory. Today somebody's going to get deliverance. Today your enemy is going to run with his tail tucked between his legs. You're going to get an opportunity to come to an altar and pray and you'll talk in tongues. Hallelujah. And we're going to celebrate all over this house. But don't you think for one second that the devil's not planning something? Don't you think for one second that the enemy's not going to try to attempt to ambush you? He's going to turn around and he's going to come back. And if he can get access into your mind, if he can play the Trojan horse into your mind, if you'll open up and you'll... Oh God, you're not hearing me today. You give, you give the enemy access to your life. What do you mean, Pastor? Well, you follow people on Facebook that claim to be prophets. Yeah. 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 But they don't know nothing. Uh, you're listening to people. You're giving people influence in your life. Backsliders. My God. Mm. Well, look, hey, let me do that. Let me go ahead. I drive down 28 East. Multiple, every day. It seems like every day of my life I'm driving down 28 East coming, coming down this way, be it for work or for church or whatever. I see them, Mark, parked all over the side of that street down there. Got their boats back there behind them. You know what their boats are full of? Decoys. Yeah. Duck yeah. decoys. Lookalikes. Yeah. Pretends. Yeah. Come on. Hey, can I tell you the devil is a pretender. He will dress himself up like an angel of light, but he's a fake, he's a phony, he's not real. Hey, that's, that's how the enemy will lay a trap for you. He'll put a decoy out there. Somebody that's pretending, you may even call a brother or sister. But they're fakes. They're phonies. They're not the real deal. You better have enough discernment about you to be able to pick them out. Because he'll put a decoy out there. that will cry out and say, hey, it's safe. Hey, this is a safe spot. Come on down and rest here. And then, thing you know, you got buckshot. Because it's a fake. 
It's a decoy. Somebody ought to say praise the Lord. Because the fowler pretends to be something that he's not. The fowler is a master of disguise. He'll camouflage himself. A Trojan horse, if you will. Don't you think they don't get up in the church? Yeah, there's Trojan horses that'll even get up in the church. We just open our doors and we let them in. Wolves in sheep's clothes. I don't care how much they try to dress up like a sheep. They still gonna howl like a wolf. It doesn't matter how they try to. Uh, you listen to them long enough, and they're gonna end up howling like a wolf. And bless God, you got a pastor and you got a bishop. I'll deal with them. Hallelujah, when the time's right. Because if a wolf goes undealt with, it won't be very long, and they'll start attacking the sheep. But not in this church, baby. We're not going to fall into the trap. We're not going to fall for the Trojan horse. And so you know what you got a pastor doing? You got a pastor that's got his ears open. I'm listening for the howl. It may show up in the form of a praise the Lord, brother. It may show up like a like a in Jesus' name or pray for me or talking in tongues. But but you know what? You're only gonna be able to uh, like a sheep long enough. Eventually that howl is gonna come out of you. And when it does, my friend. I said, when it does, well, somebody say amen. 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 That's, you know what? This is true play. That's why we're super, super duper careful about what we allow in leadership ministry. We don't just let anybody stand up here on this platform. That's right. We don't let anybody behind this pulpit. That's right. We're not just going to allow any any blow Joe that comes through those back doors and, and says, hey, I'm a preacher and I got a message. Not, not here. Not, in, not at Truthway. Right. When somebody shows up and they say, hey, I got talent. Hey, I'm anointed. Okay, well, you just sit right there and we'll find out in about yeah, six months. Yeah, yeah. You know why? Because I've seen too many wolves show up claiming they were anointed, claiming they were sheep, talking in tongues. Hallelujah. And after about six weeks, after about three months, after about a year or so, eventually, how? And they start attacking the sheep. But not a truth way. So let me make this real clear. We don't just let anybody come up here and sing their song. We don't let anybody show up and preach in this church. You better come highly recommended. Well, mm. hallelujah. Because we don't want just any old serpent subtly slithering his way in. I said we don't want some wolf dressed up like a sheep. Slipping into the church and bless God, we're not going to open our doors up and just let some truth. Oh, bless God, this is an open pulpit. Next thing you know, you got a Trojan horse with devils coming out of you, with the enemy coming out. I've seen it. My wife and I, we've got friends that pastor a church. And uh, and and this this pastor, good guy, I, I preached for him. Uh, good guy, good church. And you know what? Sad thing is, Sister Eileen, I went there, spent some time with them, and they lost a bunch of members, a bunch of good people, because some guy slipped his way up into that pulpit and started preaching. And then when it was altar call, oh, I got a word for you, sis. 
God's telling me right now yeah. that he really wants to bless you. Yeah. But you're going to have to go to church X, Y, Z to do it. Uh -huh. My God. If you want to be in the will of God, brother, you know what? You're just going to have to get out from underneath this leadership and go to another. Uh -huh. My God. A wolf. Come on. A Trojan horse. Yeah. A serpent. That has slipped his way in. Can I preach a few minutes? Yeah. Yeah. Can I talk to you for a few minutes? I want to talk to you about the snare of the fowler. I'm telling hey, the devil's out there. He wants to get you in his trap. Because if he can get you in the trap, Randall, it's hard to get out once you get your foot caught in that. I want to talk to you for a few minutes. I want, I want to point some things out. Yeah. Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 24 says, Make no friendship with an angry man and with a furious man thou shalt not go, lest thou learn his ways and get a snare to thy soul. Lest you fall into a trap. Yes. You better watch out who you make friends with. Yeah. Yeah. You better watch out. You better be real cautious who you run with. Yeah. Because the people you hang out with, the people you associate with, the people you talk on the phone with, the people you're connected to on Facebook, the people you're following. Come on. Is it possible yeah. that it's a snare? Come on. Come on. I, look, Come on. I'm so I'm not. I'm not. Let me, let me backtrack about three seconds. I am not sorry. One of the hardest things that I had to overcome, Randall, was trying to get out of the trap. When I got the Holy Ghost and all my friends had a grip on my legs and my arms and all that, everybody was holding on to me. They had a net that they had cast over me. It was so hard to break free from those old good time buddies. I was going to church on, uh, Brother, Brother Temple, I was going to church on Sunday, but on Friday night they were calling me up saying, hey, we're going to Bailey's, we're going to the club over in Marksville. Remember all the good times. Hallelujah. And so on Saturday afternoons, when they were smoking blunts, and they were popping pills, and they were calling me up, asking me if I'd give them the number of this guy, or if I'd call this person for him so they could get something. It was hard to break free. That's right. That's right. Yeah. They were a snare. You better watch out who you associate yourself with. Yes. Hallelujah. Oh. Look at somebody and tell them, don't fall into the trap. Because there is a fowler yeah. lying in wait for you. Yeah. Waiting for an opportunity to ambush you. Yeah. Waiting for a child of God to slip. Yeah. Peter said it like this. And, and pardon me for mixing my metaphors a little bit here. But he said, be sober. Be vigilant. He said, you've got an adversary, the devil, the fowler, as a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may devour. devour. You've got a predator that is watching you. He is lurking, hiding out in the bush, waiting for you to tuck your head, waiting for you to look at why you're grazing. And you're not paying attention. He's waiting for an opportunity to pow. God said, Cain, if you do well, I'll accept you. But if you don't, you better watch out because sin lieth at the door. Another translation says sin crouches at the door. He's painting a picture of a predator who's lurking, who's hiding, who's waiting for an opportunity. Who's waiting for you to slip up and make a mistake? Who's waiting for you to look down while you're grazing on your phone or on your iPad or your tablet or whatever you've got? You've got your head down, you're distracted, you're unaware, and he's waiting for an opportunity. Be sober. You better have a clear head. You better be aware of your surroundings. Be vigilant. 
you better be watching. You better have a watchman on the wall that's got your back. Because when you're not paying attention, you better have somebody in your life that is watching your back. Because you've got an adversary, the devil, who's hunting. He's a prowler. He's a predator. He's a foul. Looking to trap you. He's a master of disguise. And can I tell you today that he knows you. He's been watching you. And he knows what kind of bait to dangle out there in front of you. He knows what kind of lure to put and just he knows how to tug on it to just the right way. And I, I, we got a few fishermen in the house. I know Sister Carla, she can catch more fish than Brother Bobby. But you know what? That's another story. But but you know what? You've got a predator out there. You've got a fa I, I know I'm mixing metaphors, but I hope you get the point that I'm trying to make today. But he'll throw that thing out there right in front of your face. But I've come to tell somebody today, you better beware because there is a hook in that worm. And if he can get that thing in Hallelujah. You better pay attention. Don't be distracted. Come on. Come on. I'm kind of feeling like I'm going to get a little bit ahead of myself. I said, don't be distracted. I seen this thing a while back. Um, it was about master pickpockets. It was this guy that used to be a, a thief. Uh, uh, you know, that's how that's how he survived is stealing from people. They go to one of these big cities, these tourist attraction cities. And they get on the subway or out there where people are just wall to wall and they're all bumping up against each other. And, and he was a master pickpocket that had turned good. And so now his whole career is going around to these different places and doing, um, you know, shows and assemblies and stuff like that where he teaches people how to how to watch for stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You got to be careful. You got to be alert. Because you never know when somebody's going to walk up and they're going to just simply brush into you, uh -huh. excuse me, yeah, and walk off right, with, right. Yes. Uh -huh. with your wallet in their hand yeah. or something out of your purse. Uh -huh. Can I tell you that the devil... Few come more on, minutes. Come on, I'm, not, I'm not quite through yet. Come Praise on. God. We only have one service today, come Truth Way. Hallelujah. The devil likes to use sleight of hand. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Misdirection. Yes. If he can get you looking over here, uh -huh. hey, hey, right here, everybody, right here, you have no idea what he's doing over here. That's what that master pickpocket said. He said, if I can bump into you right here and I can distract you by bumping into you, you don't know that my buddy's on the other side with his hand in your pocket. Yeah. Come on. Somebody say amen. amen. Sleight of hand. Yeah. Misdirection. That's what the enemy does. He doesn't want you recognizing. He doesn't want you to realize what he, he's doing. And so he, he gives you a little diversion. He'll put something over there to get your eyes fixed on that while he's over here messing with your kid. Yeah. Hey, if I can get you praying over here about this person, hallelujah, and then I'll sneak around over here because you're distracted. All of a sudden, I got my hands on your kid or I've got your grandbabies in my trap. Yeah. Tell somebody, don't fall into the trap. I want to talk to you for a few minutes about these traps, a couple of traps that, that the enemy wants you to fall into. If he can get you in his trap, hallelujah. hallelujah. Philippians chapter 3 and verse number 1. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things to you, to me indeed, is not grievous, but for you it is safe. He's saying, look, I know I've told you this before. But I think I need to tell you again. 
Hallelujah. I ought not to be sorry about having to repeat myself. I've got to tell you. I've got to warn you. The apostle says, you better beware of dogs. He said, you better beware of evil workers and beware of the concision. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Can I tell you that a trap of the enemy is if the enemy can get you to be confident in your flesh. Well, that, that kind of went over like a... Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is a trap. If the enemy can get you to think that you're big enough, that you're tough enough, that you're smart enough, that you can do this thing in the flesh, you are falling into his trap. He said in another place, he said, are you so foolish? Having begun in the spirit, are you now made perfect in the flesh? We've got people that come to this church and they think that they're good enough just the way they are. Well, I just showed up. You ought to be at least happy about that. Hey, let me tell you, you better beware of the fowler. Because if the fowler can get you in the trap of thinking that you're good enough just the way you are, thinking that you can do things in the flesh, friend, you're going to go out and you're going to make a mess for yourself. You're going to make a mess for your marriage. You're going to make a mess for your little baby dolls. You will make a mess in the flesh. You think that you can fall into the trap of thinking that you just by showing up, you're doing okay. And you never grow up into the purpose and the destiny that God has for you. Hallelujah. I've come to tell somebody today that that is a trap. It is a snare. We've got too many people in the church that think that they can just show up, clap their hands every once in a while, let somebody else worship for them. Friend, you've already fallen into the trap. You better do everything you can before you leave this church today to try to shake yourself out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, you know, there's a flip side to that. Because some fall into the trap of thinking that they'll never be good enough. Some fall into the trap of thinking that Oh, you know what? I'm not wanted. Nobody loves me. Uh, I'm not important in the house of God. They don't miss me when I'm gone. Hallelujah. That is a lie from the devil. Hey, can I tell you the fowler is a liar? Mm. The reason you feel that way, friend, is because you've fallen into the trap. And Satan knows, the fowler knows that if he can get you to think like that, if he can get you to, if he can prevent you from becoming what God wants you to be, your family will never have revival. If he can get your foot in his hold, you'll never go reach your coworker. You'll never reach into that community. You'll never reach your neighbor. My God. Brother Randall, I've seen people fall into the trap and call it a blessing from God. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Let me say that again. I have seen people snared by the fowler. And they look at it and say, Wow, look how God has blessed me. Because it shows up in the form of a good paying job, a good paycheck. Oh, but I can't make it to prayer meeting. I won't be at church. Uh, but pastor, I got this good job and they're offering me a promotion. No, what you've got is you've got yourself in a trap. You have been snared, my friend. I've seen it, brother. I've seen it, sister. 
Some young person's got a call of God on their life. But they've got the coach hounding them about joining the team because they can throw a ball or they can shoot a basket. Oh, but he won't be able to make it to prayer meeting on Tuesday because they've got practice. Oh, we've got little league games on Sunday. We've got tournaments. We're not going to be able to make it to church. Let me tell you something, friend. You've gotten yourself in a trap. You've gotten yourself in the snare of the power. If you got to shake yourself loose. I don't know how to, where to go with all this. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Hallelujah, Jesus. My God. Oh, yeah. Jesus. Listen. Listen. Make a way, make a way, Jesus. Hold back everything. I've seen it. I've seen it. I've heard it. God, I love you, Jesus. Oh, Pastor. She's so beautiful. She's everything that I've ever wanted. That's great. Where'd she go to church? Uh, well, come on. In Jesus' name, she's coming here. That's great. Does she have the Holy Ghost? She loves God. I don't really know. We've uh, we've never really talked about it. Let me tell you what you're doing. You are opening your door up. And you are bringing a Trojan force into your life. You better beware of the fowler. You are. Mama, daddy, mama, you better be on watch. You better be vigilant because you've got an adversary that's looking at your baby doll. Looking for an opportunity to get your baby's foot off in a trap. Proverbs 7, look at this. Me and Randall talk about this. It's, we make jokes about this, but it's real. Yes, it's not it a funny is. matter. You listen to this. Proverbs chapter 7 and verse 23. I realize I've gone too long. I'm just no. about done. No. Proverbs chapter 7 and verse 23. Now you've got to take the whole chapter yeah, into context. Because the whole chapter is talking about an adulterous woman uh -huh. who is trying to get some simple man into her yeah. trap. Yeah. Said the, psalm, or the, uh, the wise man said, this is how she operates. As a bird hasteth to the snare and knoweth not that it is for his life. Yeah. That adulterous woman is out there calling out to a little bird. Hey, come in. Hey, look at me. Hallelujah. That Proverb 7 woman yeah. walking, showing just a little too much. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Oh, I know she's Pentecostal. I know she goes to a Pentecostal church. Come on. Come on. But Come she's on. got a split that goes all the way up from, from Dan all the way to Beersheba. Come on. It's a trap, friend. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on, but they camouflage it by talking in tongues. They camouflage it huh, by wearing a skirt. But every once in a while, that thing is it's like a peep show. Come on. <laughs> Say that again. Now you see it, now you don't. <laughs> it's a trap. Yeah. It's like that old carnival, carnival barker. Come and see. Come and check it out. We've got what are some of the things they do? We've got the tiniest horse that you've ever seen in your life. It's some things they, they do at the carnival, at the, at the fair, or whatever. There you go. Hey, come and see this thing yeah. that we've dug up, that we've found. You've never seen anything like it before. Yeah. Come and see. Yeah. Mm. Come on. Stand. I need to just go ahead. This thing's getting out of control. It's getting out of control. Right now. Good. Good. Yeah, come see the the three-legged man or the, the come, come see the cyclops hey let me tell you something 
Every one of you, you've got a trap in your purse or in your pocket. Hallelujah. You know what? I don't know. I hope, I hope this isn't happening to you. All the, you know what? Let me backtrack that. I hope it is. I hope it doesn't just happen to me. But it seems like me and my wife, I was talking to her about this earlier. It seems like every couple of weeks, we get a random text message. We both get it at the same time with, with a link that if you'll just press on that link, it'll divert you to a website. Right. They've gotten to the place where they're not trying to be sneaky about it anymore. Yes, come on. Right, right. Come on. They, they send it out. You look at the, all the, the numbers that they send it to whenever, whenever we get this. There'll be like 50 phone numbers consecutively. 2853, 2854, 2855, 2856. And they'll send it to everybody. Woo. Does that just happen to us or to it doesn't happen to you. It happens all the time. Man, you know what? That makes me feel a whole lot better. That it's not just me. Praise God. It makes me feel like I've been subscribed to something that, you know, they're selling my information out or something. It's a trap. It's a trap. You know, in the, in the uh, cyber security realm, they call it phishing. That's what they call it. They call it fishing. They just throw it out there. And if they can just get one person that's hungry. That's right. Let me tell you something. The devil knows what whets your appetite. The devil knows what what you're hungry for. And if he could just. And put it in a pool big enough. With a couple of people. Somebody's going to. Right. And get that hook out. Yes, yes, mm. yes. Hallelujah. And you'll be trapped. You know what? There's people here today. You're trapped by your old way of thinking. Mm. Maybe it has to do with your upbringing because you lived in the trap. And you had, I'm not picking on you, but I, I, I'm going to use you for a minute. <laughs> He's from the trap. Thank God he got out. But you know what? He was raised with some ideas. A mentality. Some ways. He's got some ideas up here. That mama put in him. And daddy put in him. And you know what? Every once in a while, a little bit of daddy shows up. Can I get an amen from back to back? And you know what? He got up in this pulpit and he, he, he told us some great testimony last Sunday and gave us some good word that God's been so kind to him and, and how he didn't have a whole great, uh, you know, relationship with his mama other than really just kind of having a good time and maybe, uh, you know, other things. But, but you know what? Every once in a while, mama shows up. That old way of thinking. And you know what? We got some of that too. Some things that our culture put into us. Some things that our family put into us. Some things that we just have. It's got a, it's got a hold on us. We've got our foot in the bear claw. And it's just hard to get away because, well, mama told me and, you know, my grandma or my grandpa, they, they told me that this was just the way it was. You know what? When you get in the church, you are a part of a new culture, a Jesus culture. Old things pass away. All that old way of thinking, the way that the way that your parents or your community or your your people told you that it was, you break free from that trap. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler 
Anybody thankful for that? Yes. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. You know, I was thinking about our lesson Thursday night. Israel was in a trap. Uh -huh. yes, come on. And I'm not going to re-preach all that. But suffice it to say that the way they got out was a man of God took his rod and he yes. stretched out. He said, hey, children, it's time to go forward. Yes. Leave that old way of thinking behind. Leave that old way of living behind. Leave that old slave mentality behind. And go forward. Peter found himself in a trap. But there was a church that was praying. That was able to break him free. I love this one. Oh, this one's powerful. And I'm closing with this. Psalm 34, the inscription over that psalm says that it was a psalm of David when he changed his behavior before Abimelech, who drove him away, and he departed. He said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. David was running from Saul. He ran to the king of Gath, Akish, or Abimelech. When he got into the king's courts, some of the people around him, around the king, were saying, King, this is him. This is David. This is the one that killed our champion. We've got him right where we want him. We've got him trapped. Let's see. When David saw that he was trapped, the Bible says he began to act like a madman. He changed his behavior, Brother Mark. He got so wild and so crazy, the Bible says his spittle began to run down his face. He began to get so wild and so crazy that the king said, Surely this isn't David. This isn't the man that killed our giant. This is a crazy man. You must have brought him in here to make me laugh. You know what he did? He got crazy. And he praised his way yeah. out of his trap. Yeah. Come on. Woo. You know what? There's somebody in this church today. You found yourself trapped. You're in the devil's hold. It seems like he's got you right where he wants you. You found yourself stuck. And you found yourself snared. But I'm opening up these altars today. And I'm trying to encourage somebody to get crazy. Somebody ought to shake themselves out. You found yourself stuck in some old ways of thinking. You found yourself stuck in pornography. You found yourself stuck in habits and addictions. But you got to come. Come on, I'm asking somebody to step out right now. Step out of that trap. You're trapped by that pew right now. You're snared in thinking that church is supposed to be done a certain way. Then we come, we have two songs, take up an offering, have preaching, and come pray for a few minutes. I'm asking somebody to break out of that snare and that trap. Somebody ought to come, hallelujah, and praise your way out of that trap.
is breaking free right now. Somebody's breaking loose of the trap and the hold of the devil. Come on, church. Don't be distracted right now. Lift up your voice and pray. Oh, God, God.
somebody got to lift up their voice and say, I'm free. Chapter number 10, 
when Cornelius was preaching to the Gentiles, the Bible said that they, they while he, Peter yet spake these words, they were filled with the Holy Ghost. You know how he knew it? Because he heard them speak with tongues. Yeah. In Acts chapter 2, when Peter was preaching to the Jews, he told them, when they were asking that question, what meaneth this? He referred to the thing that they saw and heard. They heard something and they saw something that provoked them to say, what is, what is going on? Hallelujah. They saw them being moved by the Spirit and they heard them speak with tongues. Hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord. Have you ever been baptized in Jesus' name? Good, good, good. That's important. Praise the Lord. Amen. Why don't we all stand if you're able? Hallelujah. Look at somebody. Tell them, don't fall into the trap. I would, you know, a lot of this was birthed the other night. I was tucking Anna in the bed. I was putting her down and we got to talking about things and I was using this as an illustration, the snare of the fowler. And um, it seemed like I told her, I said, when I was a child, we tried to trap creatures. Uh, whatever it was, just different things. And I, I know some of you probably know what I'm talking about. Some of you probably think this is silly, but we'd take like an old box and, and we'd hold it up with a stick and we'd stick something like some, some kind of bait up in that box, hoping that when whatever animal it was come along and get that bait, whatever food we put out there, probably some moldy cheese or something. But we put whatever it was, some peanut butter or something up in there, hoping that that animal would knock that stick down and get caught in our trap. Don't you think the devil doesn't think like that sometimes? Just something simple. It doesn't have to be some elaborate, big, fancy, well-to-do trap. He'll just put some, some simple thing out there. And put whatever your thing is. Doesn't have to be sin. It doesn't have to be sin. Right. Right. Just put it out there. And before you know it, boom. You're in the trap. And once you get in the trap, it's hard to get out. But it is possible. In fact, for a child of God, you better. He shall deliver thee. If you're going to get out, it's going to be because he shall deliver thee. Why don't we lift our hands one more time? I'm sorry I've kept you so long. Please, please forgive me. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, I plead your blood. I pray, God, that you would touch our good people. I pray, God, that you would help them. Go with them, Father. I pray in Jesus' name you release us. Help us to go and be witnesses. In Jesus' name, everybody say amen. If you're planning on uh, going to our Pineville Church, you probably just hang around. Brother Dunn will be here by about 4.30. So y'all greet each other in Jesus' name. Tell somebody don't fall into the trap. 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 What? Nothing. Mind your own business. What? Oh yeah. So if you go to dinner, I throw the option card.